Welcome to the Spunky Spirit Podcast. I'm your host, psychic medium, Carrie Muggs. This is where we learn all things spirit, everything from spiritual gifts, awakenings, ghosts, aliens, and starseeds. Nothing is untouchable, but always fun and spunky. I am honored to be on this spiritual journey with you, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Hello, my little spunksters. So today we are going to talk about the Akashic Records. And I have done a podcast about the Akashic Records before, but mostly I talked about what they were. I never really talked about how you can access them for your own journey or for your own spiritual journey. So this in this episode, we're kind of going to, going to talk about what they are. And in this one, we're also going to talk about how you can access it. Now, some people believe that only trained Akashic readers can enter the Akashic Records, but I believe everybody can tap into the Akashic Records, but only their own. So you have to have permission when you access your the Akashic Records for anybody else. Kind of like when I do readings. If I go in psychically or I look into future relationships, that's why relationships are so hard to see. Because I don't have permission to access both parties of the relationship, just the one that's in the reading. So it's all about permission. You can't read somebody or read read a person. You shouldn't without having permission, either through the Akashic Records or psychically. Now, psychically, when you read the person, you're reading their energy, their what they're giving off at that moment. Reading the Akashic Records is throughout time, throughout all eternity, throughout all time, this was recorded, and this is past, present, and future, because even though we see it as linear, the universe does not. The universe sees it all incumbent, all happening, all happening at once. Now, the Akashic Records can change um, and grow because we have free agency. So it's kind of like the blueprint when we go, when we come to Earth, we have this blueprint that we kind of want it to go. This we kind of want to experience these certain things. The Akashic Records kind of like have it written that way, but when we actually come to Earth and do some things or do and have different different choices or our free agency, it changes those those what of what was written. So it's kind of all incumbent but always growing. So the ak- Akashic word comes from the Sanskrit word akasa. And this means the sky, the spirit, the ethers, or or astral light. So some people think of it as a cosmic database. So it's just it's it's a cosmic database database. Some people think it's just um, a spiritual type of thing that's in the ethers or in the ether realm. And some people think it might be tangible. So um, Edgar Casey, he was a very very great medium. He was called the sleeping medium. And we're going to talk a lot about him sometime a lot during this too, because I, I, he did a whole book on the Akashic Records. And he actually believed that when he was doing his readings, so he would go into a meditative sleep state and he would go in with some questions. And while he was in this sleep state, he would get the answers. The only answers he would get though were, he mostly did readings for healings and um, to help people with past life stuff if they were bringing it into this life. The Akashic Records are not used for fortune telling. You can see a little bit into the future, but it's not. The Akashic Records are used to heal. They're not used to um, promote faults, do any of that. kind. Very, very spiritual. And a lot of people, when I first started reading about the Akashic Records, thought that some people think that you need to have access to them through your guides or there's somebody guarding them and you have to ask for permission to come through. The Akashic Records are also known, what I call as the infinite intelligent intelligence or the collective energy, the collective energy, the vibrating energy, the field of energy. The Christians think it's sometimes it's known to Christian people by the book of life or the the book of the living. 
And Islam calls, it says that it's the preserved tablet and even the Hebrew religion calls it the book of God. So a lot of people wonder, are these tablets or these, are is the Akashic records, are they tangible? And Edgar Cayce kind of believed that they were at one time. He said that he either believed they were in the Yucatan off the coast of Bismi, of Bismia. I don't know what that, yeah, I, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, or buried beneath the Great Sphinx in Egypt. And um, kind of some people believe that the Ark of the Covenant there is there too. That there's stuff underneath the Great Sphinx that we, that are hidden there or um, hidden from us. And a lot of people think that they're just on, they're on the etheric plane, which means they're just spiritual. They're just something that exists and um, in a spiritual sense. Now, I kind of always pictured them spiritual. Like I always pictured them in a spiritual kind of like a great big city. And there's lots of different buildings. And each building has different records for different things. And so that's kind of how I pictured them. And honestly, I kind of believe that sometimes when you do readings and you, the spirits come through and they tell you all about themselves, but sometimes I can kind of feel a collective energy or an infinite intelligence energy that is maybe accessing the Akashic records. And so I think that's kind of cool because sometimes I can tell a little bit of the difference, like when I'm reading the person as a psychic or when I'm reading the spirit that comes through or when I'm picking up information from the Akashic records. I think it's kind of cool. Now, reading my own Akashic records, though, is a little harder because you always wonder if because you have to be in a certain conscious state or a certain meditative state. And so sometimes you wonder if you're just making it up or if you're having if it's if you're it's your it's really your intuition or if you're just your imagination. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about. That's the strongest thing. I think the hardest thing for people who are trying to read about themselves or figure out their own stuff is whether they think it's imagination or intuition. And I kind of talked about this in one of my reels on Instagram. Imagination will have energy with it or emotions with it. Intuition doesn't. You'll be watching it and not really have any kind of energy that goes with it. So that's kind of an easier way to tell. Now, the Akashics can be, the Akashic records can be used to, they can be used for anything as far as finding your personal purpose, finding what other lives that you had, not just on earth, but other in the universe, in other realms, in other places. Because in the Akashic, your soul, everything your soul has gone through is written in these Akashic records. You can also learn about global issues or earth issues, past and future in the Akashic records. And you can expand your intuition. You can expand like how you're being intuitive or expand your spiritual growth. It You can do all kinds of things like as far as your spiritual gifts because you could probably access them to look and see what your spiritual gifts are, right? And you can learn about your past lives, uh, your reincarnation. Now, a lot of times I didn't like to go into past life stuff because the past is the past and the most important thing really is the now. But if your past is blocking you from processing the now or living in the now or hindering the now, then it is kind of interesting. It's probably best to go into the past and see what's going on that's not making you so you can move forward. Because if we don't process things, it's hard to move forward. And that's in every lifetime and in in every, like, as we are right now. And also in like a past re- a past life or a reincarnation. So we can be carrying something from a past life into this life. Or we can also have something that happened to us in this life while we were smaller and still not be able to process it. That's most of the time I always say the past is the past. But if there's something in the past that you haven't been able to heal, then it is probably recommended that you figure out what is in the past that's causing this and try and process it to move forward. And the Akashic Records are great for this. You can also learn about some of your future stuff, but honestly, and there have been stories where people go in and see a future of some of their future stuff and they didn't like it, so they changed it. 
there I was reading a book called The Akashic Records Made Easy by Sandra Ann Taylor. And she had talked about an interview that a lady had had, or she went to the Akashic Records and saw that the interview didn't go very well. And so she changed everything up as like what she was wearing, what she was going to respond to the questions, and it actually went differently. And that's why I mean that you can change the Akashic Records. They're, ever, they're always changing because... What what they kind of think will happen or what's in the blueprint might be completely different than what actually happens because with emotions, emotions are so up and down, you can change or alter your decisions and especially where you have the free agency because everything is a choice and so you can change instances by just different decisions that you make in your life, life like uh, life-altering decisions. So... That's And that's the next one too. It says you can program events or manifest certain events for the future. So this is where your manifestation, I really do believe that people who have a really strong manifest manifestation gift are accessing the Akashic Records. And you can access these honestly without even really knowing what you're doing um, or without even realizing that you're doing it. It's just an infinite intelligence that you can tap into Every once in a while, you have to just kind of be in that state of consciousness as long as you're kind of like in a meditative state. And that doesn't mean, I mean, you could be running and be in a meditative state. You could be doing the dishes and be in a meditative state. You don't have to just be sitting down and being in a, to be and medit in meditating just to be in a meditative state. So a lot of think a lot of people think that we carry, and you've heard me talk about this before too, some of the Akashic in our in our DNA, our own DNA, it's written in our cells, which is also really interesting because a long, long time ago, I was watching somebody do a video about past lives, about past life reincarnations. And she talked about how she had um, watched, she had gone into hypnotism, she'd been hypnotized, and she saw a past version of her, of a child that was choking in a high chair. And she said it really, really got to her because she was having issues with some food that she was eating in this past life. I mean, in this life. And so when she went back, she saw that and realized that it was, that was the reason. And she, that video had gone on to say that that was encoded in her DNA, that these, these, um, memories or these, Things, things that we have, past life regressions, they're encoded in us. And that's also, you can even go down, that's where um, the healing for generations happens. That's where the, because it's all in our ancestors, we just get recoded and they're in our, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but like generational healing because it's it's just passed down in this DNA and in our cells. And that is part of what the Akashic Records, I think it's part of us. I think it's kind of intertwined. And that's kind of just my opinion. But it, it could be different. But that's what I kind of think. And um, so that's why you can always access, that's why I believe you can access your own personal records. And you can, because you have you can access your own personal records because they're part of you, right? They're part of you, even though they, they are in the Akashic record realm or wherever the Akashic records are, they're still part of you too, because at the end of the day, we're all one, right? We're all one energy. So I think that's kind of my opinion on it. So Edgar Casey, he would, when he would go, his readings were all, when somebody asked him how he got his information, he said, that he would get it from the Akashic Records. So the Akash, this is kind of what he said. It's known as the Book of Life or God's Book of Remembrance can be equated to like a supercomputer with all the data and we can it can be called on whenever we want to. It's like the cloud, right? When when we have the iCloud or whatever cloud, it's like a storehouse of all this information. That's kind of why I pictured it as a great big city, like a great big city. And for some reason, I always pictured it like floating up to it, like riding in a boat and and um, having the captain of the boat like take me up to this beautiful city and then wherever I wanted to go in this city to find out different things 
would be, this is where the Akashic Records are held. And they contain every thought, every deed, every word, every feeling, every intent. So that we have, and they have, supposedly, they have a huge influence over our everyday lives and our relationships and our feelings and our belief systems. But we don't really but we don't really know that that's kind of what's going on. But Edgar Cayce, he referred to them in this way. He said, upon time and space is written the thoughts, the deeds, the activities of an entity. So that could be rocks, people, dogs, cats, as in relationships to its environs, its hereditary influence as directed or judgment drawn by or according to what the entity's ideal is. Hence, as it has been often called, the record is God's book of remembrance, and each entity, each soul, as the activities of a single day of an entity in the material world, either makes good or bad or indifferent, depending upon the entity's application of self. Now, that's kind of deep, and it's kind of hard, and I probably should have read it through before I read it all this thing, but it's kind of interesting because everything that we do, like when I was little, and I remember somebody telling me about the book of life in the Bible, or the book of God in the Bible, I would honestly picture a God in heaven just writing things down that I did all day. And I would be so careful about if I did bad things or good things, because I was so nervous about what was written in my book. And yes, this is, I know, it's just that intrusive thoughts of children, right? And I kind of think I was like that because I kind of knew that it was real. I knew that the maybe not a man writing in a book so much, but I knew that this book existed. And I knew that my doings and my intentions or my all of the things that I did on this life were going to be recorded in that way. And it's and I kind of think that when we go to the other side, This is what we access when everybody talks about that life review. They're accessing the Akashic Records. That's what you're, that's what you're accessing, right? So, um, when he would access the Akashic Records, he had this ability to select the information that would most help the person that he was doing the reading for. And especially in that particular time of his life. So Edgar Cayce knew how to get through, he had this amazing phenomenal gift of of how to access and read the akashic records very well and he would also help with healing he did a lot of help with like um healing people if they were having issues with their life he would go in and access the answers to in the akashic in the akashic records so um when asked the difference between the Book of Life and the Akashic Records, he this is what Edgar Cayce said. They said, what is meant by the Book of Life? He said, the record that the individual entity itself writes upon the skin of time and space through patience and is opened when self, when self has attuned to the infinite and may be read by those attuning into that consciousness. And what is the Book of Remembrances? It's the Book of Life. What is the Akashic Records? Those made by the individual just as indicated. So he very much thought they were all the same. He indicated that they were all the same. And that he also believed that that was just more than just a storehouse. That he said, I I have a hard time quoting him because sometimes it goes over your head or sometimes it goes over mine. But he says, we have... Um, is it just a store? Somebody asked him, was it just a storehouse for the past? And he said, yes, um, or more. They asked him, Casey indicated that this, these records were more than just a storehouse of the past. When he stated, yes, we have the body here and the record as has been made and as may be made with the will as exercised and the condition in Inner, irrespective of the will's influence or the effect as has been created. We have conditions that might be in, that have been, that are, and that we may do. So do not get the three mixed up or crossed purposes of either. So it's everything that was, is, and now. And he could access those. So 
kind of, I mean, how, I don't, it says that our um, lives, daily lives are impacted by the Akashic Records, but I honestly think it's what we do. It's what we do that's written or that's recorded by the Akashic Records. And I don't think it's a book that has everything written. I think it's like, or even a video, it could be like a video, like a hologram type of thing. That's that's kind of recorded and stated. I really believe that um, our life reviews are, pros- are accessing the Akashic Records. So how does this help you? How does this, because... If you, if anybody can access the Akashic Records, then you can, right? Like anybody can do this. And so I guess this is where uh, you've got to, this is where I want to help you because I am all for going to Akashic Record Reader and they can look at some of your reincarnations, look at some past, present, and future stuff. Um, But I also think that you should have access, just like a psychic. You should, can go to a, a psychic and validate things. But I also think that you should have access to know the answers to your own life. That would be really ridiculous that somebody was giving the, given the gift to access your life stuff, but not you. So, to access the Akashic Records. It really takes, it will take some practice and it will take some time, but here's some, here's some different ideas. Definitely practice meditation because you do have to be in a conscious state, in a, in kind of a meditative conscious state. You have to be in that sitting in the power as mediums call it, kind of like, and some people say that you have to imagine yourself coming up to the Akashic Records or opening up the Akashic Records or asking permission to get into the Akashic Records, which I think is kind of cool because you can, this can be your imagine. You can imagine in whatever you want. Like I imagine the city, I imagine like going up in one of those little boats and the guide stops there and I walk up the steps and I go into the Akashic realm and I look at the Akashic or I kind of have intention of what I want to find. Um, but you can do whatever you want to. You can you can imagine it as a river, like kind of like um, in Harry Potter, where you look inside the bowl and every memory or everything. I mean, that's kind of obvious too in Harry Potter. And they look inside that is that bowl or that cauldron, and they pick out different memories of Harry's life. That could be the Akashic Records. That could be what it looks like for you. You could imagine this little, this big, huge bowl that has all this swirling, all these memories of everything inside of it. And you can pick at different parts of it and look at some of your life. So you have to first imagine how you and picture the, um, wouldn't that be really cool if that was in the Sphinx? If that was like a big bowl of that in underneath the Sphinx, that would be awesome. That's kind of cool. Now I kind of want to picture my Akashic Records as the Harry Potter thing instead of the big city. But you have to picture the Akashic Records how you want to. How you most likely, if you want to picture it as a book, if you want to picture it as a computer, like you sit at a great big computer and you watch different videos, you could picture it as you sitting down at the computer and seeing different YouTube videos of your life and start play, and pushing the play button. You could also imagine it as being in a movie theater and sitting in the theater and watching your live play in different video clips throughout. You could picture it however you want the Akashic Records to be for you. And so what you need to do is when you go, when you practice meditation and you practice being in that meditative state, then you can start having the intention before each meditation to go into the Akashic Records. And if the first couple of times you just picture yourself sitting in the movie theater or in front of the big bowl or in the big city, that's okay. Just pr- imagine yourself like in the theater watching different clips, walking around or either walking around the city or just different, picking different parts of the bowl of the Harry Potter bowl. You do whatever you want to and just practice that. Then you can start asking questions or you can start going in with intentions. You can start, you can write a list of questions that you have and then you can go in to the, into the meditation with the desire of that question being answered and you can picture yourself in the Akashic Record realm. 
And so, and you can ask it any questions that provide you and mostly for your highest good. Um, not fortune telling, not lottery numbers. A lot of people are like, do you know the lottery numbers? If I knew the lottery numbers, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be like, I maybe I would. I'd still be doing readings, but honestly, not, I, yeah. So you get this gist of it. it the, the, the Akashic Records or the energy that you tap into are mostly the intention should be for the highest good. Always, always for the highest good. You don't want to go in and honestly, you probably won't get access to somebody else's because I do know and I have been told that if some of these books that I've read, there is a guardian of the Akashic Records and they do not let you, they do not let you access other people's information unless you ask. And I know that there can be some dark magic at play at this or sometimes things like that. But honestly, this is for good intentions. This is for healing. This is for helping. This is for highest. This is highest good stuff. And this is for what wanting, like if you're stuck and you want to find your purpose or if you want to figure out what you, sh what your purpose in life is or or what you've done in other past lives, or why are you struggling with not being able to eat bananas in this lifetime? Maybe there was something weird in a, in a past lifetime that you picked a banana and you, a spider crawled on you. I mean, who knows what it is, but you would have access to that. And then the cool thing is, is you can access this on your own for your own stuff, and then you can go to a Akashic Record Reader. I've actually considered doing it, Sometimes, like I want to take classes on how to read the Akashic Records, but I honestly feel like sometimes, a lot of times during the readings, I already tap in. But I would like to have, instead of just regular mediumship readings or psychic readings, I would like to add Akashic Record readings. So that might be something in the future you might see me doing, just because they're, it's so cool. I think it's the coolest thing ever, and I think it's once you start practicing and get used to it, and the first couple times, you're going to think that you're making it all up, and that's your imagination, but then you're going to get you're going to see things play out the way they do and you're going to kind of get more comfortable with it. And you're going to realize that while you're in there, you can manifest things for your future. So, so, and when I do a reading with somebody and I tell them, especially great manifestors, when I have people come through that have a really good manifesting reading, I will tell them to do a meditation. And if they have, um, or if they're doing something and they have an intrusive thought or they have a, um, they envision something scary. I actually tell them to visualize with their clairvoyance, rewinding what they have just visioned or what they just thought in their brain and then playing it as they want to see it. Because to me, that is accessing your Akashic records. So if you have an intrusive thought and you're so worried about something going the way it is, I used to get really nervous when I would go to family functions sometimes. And I, when I was getting ready, I would play out this big scenario of what I was afraid was going to happen. And so I got into this really good um, habit of rewinding what I, in my brain, visualizing what I thought was going to happen, rewinding that, watching it rewind, and then playing it forward as I want it to happen. And I believe that when you do that, you're kind of changing the Akashic Records. You're rewriting the Akashic Records. And that's why I tell my clients all the time, rewind that and then visualize what you want to happen. Because I think, I believe that the Akashic Records are not like videos, but kind of, I believe like they're, they're kind of holographic or they're kind of a holograph. And you can watch it play out. Like, you know, when you, I don't know if any of you watch Star Trek, but you know, Star Trek, when they would go into the holodeck, and they would say, like they would, in a room, they could envision a whole, a whole thing happening. And I kind of feel like that's kind of like the Akashic Records. And that's how manifestation is. It's all combined, you guys. It all relevates. It's all relative. It's all combines into one. And so that's, I pretend, you know, or that could be the Akashic Record. When you meditate and pretend you're going into the holodeck. And when the holodeck, you're, you're examining the Akashic Records and just kind of envision what you're seeing. Because this is also why you can create 
a life that you want because you are accessing, when you manifest, you're, you're accessing these Akashic Records. So now those are some of the meditations, obviously the best way to do that. Um, sometimes you can, I believe you can go to the Akashic Records without really even knowing especially sometimes when you pick up stuff on other people and you're not really reading them, but you can, and again, that's all about integrity and you don't want to, but you can't help it if sometimes you're tapped into the Akashic records and you see things or, or hear or know things, or you're with your clairs that you wouldn't normally know. So I also too, I want it. There's lots and lots of, I, I went onto my Spotify account and at the top I put Akashic records and there were like three or four different Akashic record, Records meditations that showed up. And in these meditations, they can take you on an Akashic Records journey. I was going to try and do a meditation and Akashic Records, but I don't really know. I'm not, I am not, perf- I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say perfect, but I'm not as well equipped for an Akashic Record journey as I would like to be. I would like to learn more about the Akashic Records and have more of these journeys on my own before I make my own meditation. But you can find these meditations any like on Spotify. And at first I thought it was podcasts talking about the Akashic Records, but then I realized these were actually meditations that took you on Akashic Record journeys. So that would be kind of cool to to try and do too. And you can go into your own and you can look at some of your past lives and you can look at what's going on now in your life and why certain things are playing out now. And you can kind of go into the future and you could anything from your career to your relationships to all of that, you can tap in to your own Akashic Records. And again, only your own. I don't know if you can tap into your children's. I've never tried, honestly. But um, I feel like that mother's intuition is part of accessing the Akashic Records. I really do. So I hope that that helps you guys with the Akashic Records. I hope that you try to play with this. I think it would be, I think it's fun. I think it's fun to just kind of, and um, I do know that, that some people say when you go into the meditation and you have to state your name, your legal name now, because which I kind of don't believe because I believe we all have spiritual names too. So I don't know about that part, but they do say that you have to say an opening prayer so you can open, you can like say a little opening thing. Um, so you can open the Akashic records and then before you leave, you need to say a closing prayer so you can close the Akashic records. So you don't leave them open all the time. I do know a lot of people think that that is really important. So, and also too, I think from my knowledge, the Akashic Records are pretty safe. If you are in the Akashic Records realm, there should be no... Always protect yourself, always, always, always when you go into meditation. But if there is somebody that you run into at the Akashic Records, ask them who they are. See if they're a guide for the Akashic Records or a guard for the Akashic Records or one of your guides. But I think you're relatively safe wherever the Akashic Records are, but still always protect before you start a meditation. So I want you guys to try this because I think it would be so cool. And I want you to just like play with it and practice it. And then I want you to DM me all of your experiences so we can talk about them on a upcoming podcast. I also am kind of trying to figure out how to do some of my podcast lives. And I'm going to start trying to figure out how to get more guests on it because I know I would have loved to have an Akashic, a professional Akashic reader on here. So I'm going to start doing that because I know that you guys like my opinions about things sometimes, but I think it's cool to have other people's opinions about things. So if you guys have any ideas of what you want to listen to or what kind of guests you want on, please let me know because I want to start doing that more often. Now, Before I go, I want you to remember, you have all the magic inside of you. So you can do this with the Akashic Records. You can tap into your own stuff. So you can, you can do this. And also too, coming up in July, July 17th, I have a class called The Connection. It's a six weeks online course. It's going to be all about teaching you how to connect and there will be parts there's of the Akashic Records. So I thought that's 
going to be way cool every week. I'm going to do a live. There's always going to be kind of like we used to do with Coffee and Carries, but I'm going to do a live to teach a class, then have questions. I'm, you're going to have access to me every week. We're going to have homework. It's going to be awesome. It's not going to be the basics. The basics are on my awakening class that's already up. The basics are things like chakras, um, your clairs, your... Um, how to protect, signs and symbols. Those are the basics. This class is going to go more into depth and it's going to be for beginners and intermediate and also, I mean, or more, more advanced because I will also give some of the, whoever wants the more advanced can give readings to the beginners. So it's going to be awesome. It's called The Connection and um, it's going to be way cool. So keep watching for that. You'll get emails on that. If you don't get my, on, not on my email list, please go to carriemugs.com so you can get all of that information. So I love you guys so much and please remember you have all the magic already inside of you. If you liked this podcast, please hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.